In this video, we're going to look at the plate production feature. We will take a simple example badge with text. We'll show how you can modify this badge so that it's compatible with the plate production feature. We'll then import a CSV file and using the data from the CSV file and the plate production feature, we'll make multiple instances of our badge. To begin, we're going to open up our example badge. The example badge is a simple rounded rectangle. It has a company name, an employee name, and an employee department. If we go to the toolpaths tab, we see we have three toolpaths, a cutout toolpath, and two engraving toolpaths. And if we preview these, we see what we expect our example badge to look like. We now want to make multiple instances of this badge for the different members of the team. In order to do that, we need to change the employee name and the employee department depending on the person. We have this data in a CSV file, so we want to import that data as a CSV file and use it to make multiple toolpaths. So in order to do that, we actually have to update the instances of our text that we wish to change so that they become variables. In order to make the name a variable, we'll have to open up the text tool and then we're going to modify the text so it no longer says Brian, but it now says the word name and it has two exclamation marks at the front and two at the end. These exclamation marks are important because they indicate to the software that this is a variable. And so in the plate production process, that variable will be substituted with a name in the CSV file. We're going to do the same with the product development text. And we're going to just change that to the word department. Now that we have our badge ready, we're going to select all of the vectors that we want to take part in the plate production process and we'll open up the plate production tool. And let's just go through all of the options on the form and describe what they do. The sheet size is automatically detected from the size of our job, in this case 12 inches by 8 inches. The plate size, again, is read from our selected data our plates are two and a half inches wide by two inches tall. The sheet margins are the gaps that we leave around the outside of our sheet. We can have them all equal by modifying this box and ticking the equal margins checkbox. Or if we turn the equal margins checkbox off, then we can have different margins for the top, the left, the bottom and the right. We're going to set that back to 0 0.25 inches and have the margins equal. The spacing options determine the distance between our plates. And then the number of plates option here tells us how many plates in X and how many plates in Y we should generate. Here we've got the auto calculator option on. And what that does is use the spacing plus the sheet margins and the plate size and sheet size to automatically determine the maximum number of plates that we can fit into our sheets. We can turn this off and manually edit these, but we're going to leave that on. Finally, there's an option to create toolpaths. If we don't tick this option, then it will just generate the vectors, but not the toolpath. On the right hand side is the data that we wish to engrave. I'm going to just delete all the existing data and hit import from file. Choose this plateproduction.csv file that I exported earlier and hit open. We see now that the data to engrave text box has been populated with a list of rows and each row contains some information about our employees. Underneath the text box is an option for the separator to use when importing the data. And it's important that this separator matches the separator used 
when the data was exported. In our case, this is comma separated, but it could be quite common for the data to be tab separated. If the data comes in looking incorrect, this is likely to be the column. Underneath this option is an option entitled first row is column names. What that indicates is that the first row of our data consists of header names for the columns of the data. This is true in our case, as we see first name, surname, etc. Finally, underneath that, we have this number of plates, and this is calculated from the data. We've got 14 rows, and so we should get 14 different plates, each customized with a name and department. In order to get this customization working correctly, we need to associate the variable name with the correct piece of data from our imported CSV. To do this, we select the variable, and the variable has been picked up from our selected objects. Here we see the variable is name, and we're going to assign this variable name to the field first name in our data. And with the department variable, we're going to assign that to the field called department. We can choose which field we assign variables to. For example, if we wanted the badges to not have the first name but the surname, we could change this to surname. And now it would print out the surnames and not the first names. But we're going to go with first name. When we're happy with our assignment, we hit calculate. Let's close the dialog and see the results of our calculation. First we see that we do indeed have the badges that we would expect. We have 12 badges, 4 by 3 as was specified, and if we come to the measuring tool and we measure the gap, we see a, an eighth of an inch there. and a quarter of an inch there, as we would have expected. But we also remember from the plate layout dialog that we expected 14 badges in total. So where are the other two badges? Well, if we come up to the layers dialog, we see we have two sheets, sheet one and sheet two. Let's turn on sheet two and turn off sheet one. And now we see our two extra badges. Let's turn back on sheet one and off sheet two. And we'll go to the toolpath tab. We have a similar thing in the toolpath tab. For each of our original toolpaths, one, two, three, we have a new toolpath for each sheet. So we have cut out our original toolpath and then S1 cut out and S2 cut out. If we go to the toolpath preview and preview visible toolpaths then we see the results of our plate layout for sheet 1. And that completes our tutorial on the plate layout dialogue.